Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch back in the hot seat again today after a week of Senate confirmation hearings. But some of the questions from lawmakers are being called borderline absurd. Fox News legal analyst Bob Matthews has been following the hearings very closely. He joins us live right now to weigh in on this. Good morning to you, Bob. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. Let's start with uh, Senator Leahy. This was what he was asking the judge on corporations. Listen, and then we'll get your reaction. Okay. Okay. We elevate the rights of corporations over those of real people. And we rubber stamp a president whose administration has asserted that executive power is not subject to judicial review. Okay, Bob. So he's trying to get him in a corner to try to basically show he's for the big people, he's for the, that he's an elitist, that in fact he's partisan, that he's pro-business, he's pro-employer, he's pro-Trump, and Gorsuch is too smart for this. He basically answered in a way to say, look, again, I will make all decisions that come to me on the law that's before me. I am not a partisan judge. Justices sit there to give the interpretation of the Constitution of the law before me. And so, again, the theme of all these Democrats, Ainsley, is going to be the big versus the small, and that's who he's for. Then Senator Leahy went on to talk about the travel ban. <clears throat> Listen to this question, Bob. Yeah. Would the president have the uh, authority to ban all Jews from the United States? So he's <laughs> insinuating the you president's going to do this, going to ban Jews. Of course, and he said, listen, our Constitution protects the freedom of religion, equal protection of the law. He said, of course, this is not something that anybody would consider. Anybody with any kind of brain would not consider this type of thing. But again, they're trying to push him in a corner, Ainsley, to say, look, I believe that because you are being selected, I've been selected as a nominee by President Trump, that in fact, you would, in fact, support this type of ban, again, going to the Muslim issue of the executive order, trying again to wedge him in the corner. Everything is designed specifically to push him into a corner to make him look like a partisan judge. All right, here is Al Franken grilling him. Listen to this. It's pretty long, but we'll get your reaction afterwards. <clears throat> to say this company is in its rights to fire him because he made the choice of possibly dying from freezing to death or causing other people to die possibly by driving an unsafe vehicle. That's absurd. Now, I had a career in identifying absurdity. <laughs> and I know it when I see it. Speaking of absurdity, talk what's about your reaction? A, talk about an talk about an ox talk about an oxymoron. <laughs> this was like a Shakespearean soliloquy. I mean, the guy never asked the question. It was his little stage. He thought he was on Saturday Night Live doing the things that he did. And again, it's it's insulting. You know, let me say something. These men and women that sit as prospective nominees, they are different people. I must tell you, as a lawyer, they are people that are so reverent in the law. And Al Franken is not going to wedge this guy. And again, they're trying to show because he wrote a dissent in favor of the employer that he is pro-employer and, and against the employee. And that's the absurdity of Al Franken's question. All right, Bob. And by Matthew, the way, he never asked a question. Thank you so much for pointing that out and for being here this morning.